In this heat transfer video lecture, we are going to solve an example problem demonstrating how you calculate the average heat transfer coefficient when given a correlation for the local heat transfer coefficient. This problem states that experimental results for the local heat transfer coefficient h for flow over a flat plate with an extremely rough surface were found to fit the relation h as a function of x is equal to ax to the minus 0.1 power. So a is just a a coefficient empirically determined, so somebody ran an experiment and they figured out here's how h changes with respect to x. And then x is the distance from the leading edge of the plate. So this correlation, if we were to plot the value of h, we would see that it follows closely with the boundary layer theory that we were talking about in the last lecture. So the boundary layer would form at the leading edge of the plate and it would grow. If, this, if the flow stays laminar, you see that it's going to be harder for heat to get from the surface temperature Ts out to the bulk fluid temperature T infinity the thicker this boundary layer gets. So we would expect that our H, which describes the flow of heat from the surface out to the bulk fluid, um, to to decrease. We'd, you'd have a less heat flowing in total as that boundary layer gets thicker when you have laminar flow. So if we were to plot this exact relationship, we would find that it looks something like this, h as a function of x. And we see because of that uh, negative term in the exponential, we see that uh, h decreases the higher x gets. So because heat transfer can be local, let's draw that again really quick. So we'd expect, a, if this is h and this is x, we'd expect a higher rate of heat transfer here than we would here because this has a higher h. So if we wanted to get the total flow of heat over the entire plate, we'd have to do some kind of an integration where we'd be breaking this up into chunks and we could numerically integrate or we could analytically integrate to get the total amount of heat. So we can apply that same concept to get the average h for this whole system. So the way that we would go about getting the average h is we would apply this relationship. So h bar, where the bar means average, would be equal to, in this particular case, uh, 1 over L, where L is the total length of the plate. And we would just integrate this from 0 all the way to the end of the plate. And here we would have our h as a function of x dx. We would do this integration from 0 to L. We have a specific empirical relationship here given, so we can go ahead and plug that in. So that's 1 over L times the integral from 0 to L of ax to the negative 0 0.1 by dx. So doing that integral, we would, so <coughs> we have our integration variable x raised to a power. So the integral would equal x to the 0 0.9, we add 1, and then we divide that by uh, the exponential term uh, plus 1. And then we would ha we'd have this 1 over L, and then we would evaluate this at L and 0. So if we did that, we would end up with this relationship, 1.11 times A times L to the minus 0. 1. So this is a, a constant. A is a constant and L is a constant. So this is going to give us H rather than an H that changed with respect to X. This is going to give us an average. So if we were to just take that and plot it using an A just equal to 1 with the units specified here. And if we wanted to find the average over 4 meters, I'm just, I've just taken this and plotted the results here. So here we have our local heat transfer coefficient h plotted in blue, you can see that we start out higher and gradually decrease. And over the entire four meters, our average heat transfer coefficient is here. So we could use the local heat transfer coefficient to find the local flux. So if we wanted to find flux at that particular point, we could use that relationship. Or if we wanted to find it at this point, we could use that relationship. But if we wanted to find the entire transfer of heat, over the entire length of the plate, or if we wanted to find the average flux of the entire length of the plate, we would want to use h bar here. And you can see our h bar just 
averages that heat transfer coefficient out. So the real takeaway here is just to come away with this idea that although in past lectures and past homework assignments we've treated H as being constant over the entire surface, it may not necessarily be so, and that is because the flow characteristics can change as a function of where you are on the surface, as we demonstrated with the growing boundary layer when we have flow over a flat plate.